and verses 1 to 2. Then I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them the wrath of God is complete. And I saw something like a sea of glass mingled with fire, and those who have the victory over the beast, over his image and over his mark, and over the number of his name, standing on the sea of glass, having harps of God, and all glory be to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Last week, our beloveds, we said that chapter 14 was talking about the great tribulation that is directed at our beloved people of the Israelite nation, the Jewish people in Israel, Middle East. And uh, we saw that they will have to go through that great tribulation in order to come back to Jesus Christ and accept Him as Lord and Savior, which most of them will do. They will come back and accept Jesus Christ and they will confess that their forefathers made a mistake by denying His first coming. They will accept His first coming and they will acknowledge that He is on His way on His second return. But it will take a great tribulation for them to realize this. However, even though this great tribulation, as we mentioned, it is directed at the Israelite nation, at the same time, it will cover the entire globe. So the human race will go through a lot of suffering in the end times, which is the 21st century, our century. Now, chapter 15 picks up from where chapter 14 finishes and in these two verses we'll see those Israelite people who will come out of the great tribulation triumphant victorious. They will come out triumphant victorious. We read in verse 1, Then I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them the wrath of God is complete. Um, I saw another sign. The word sign, when you search for it in the New Testament, you will find it in the Gospel of, according to St. John, chapter 2 and verse 11. John chapter 2 and verse 11, where John the Beloved says, And this was the first sign which Jesus had performed at the wedding of Cana of Galilee. Now when you read in the Gospel of John, St. John mentions the word sign, not a miracle. Even though what the Lord had done in that Gospel of John, what, what has been documented and recorded in the Gospel of John, they are miracles, but John the Beloved deliberately calls them sign, not miracles. And some of you may have heard from us before saying what is the difference between the sign and the miracle and why John the Beloved mentions the word sign instead of a miracle. Example, in chapter 2, the wedding of Cana of Galilee, the Lord Jesus changes the water into wine. Now, this is a miracle to change the water into wine, but John the Beloved called it a sign. Now, the word sign, which I tried to actually clarify this with one of my beloved sons, who is of a Greek background. When you go to the Greek language, the word sign is called Simeon. Simeon in the Greek language, literally it means it's a present tense movement that indicates something is coming your way in the future. So it's a movement now before your eyes and through this movement, that movement is trying to say to you, learn my beloved, learn from this moment now that something futuristic is coming your way and there is no escape from it. The, 
The Gospel of John is not our topic today, and it's extremely deep in theology. It's the depth of theology, the Gospel of John. I love it. Actually, we started doing commentary on it in Assyrian. So you, those who are of Assyrian speaking people, you can go on the Christ the Good Shepherd YouTube channel and you will see already there is about, I don't know, 16, 17 lectures just on chapter one. Now, a sign, it's a movement now telling me this movement is teaching me something is coming my way and there is no escape. I'll give you an example. King Solomon in his book, of Ecclesiastes, the Old Testament this is, in his Ecclesiastes, he talks about the sign, he talks about the sun, he talks about the rivers, he talks about the wind in chapter one, but I'll stick to the sun. He says, the sun rises, it goes up, and then it gets at its peak at 12 noon, midday, it becomes the hottest, the more the more the strongest and then after midday be, keeps on moving until it goes down and disappears completely now the movement of the sun is called simeon sign what do we learn from this sign from this movement of the sun the sun rising is when I and all of us were one day born into this world. When the sun first rises, you can stare at it without your eyes being hurt or going blurry vision. Why? Because it is at infancy stage. It is not strong in light, in heat, hasn't grabbed, you know, hasn't taken that momentum to become the strongest. So when the sun initially rises, you can stare straight into it without hurting your eyes. But as the sun moves, Simeon, as the sun moves, goes up and up, becomes stronger in light, stronger in heat. The strongest is midday. What is midday? Our youth age. I am 21. I am 30. I am 40 maybe 50 still on a bit of a rough ground after 50 it's a downhill brother thank you very much i am so generous aren't i i'm very enthusiastic now but it's in it's it's in all in the heart don't worry about the ex external appearance it's all in the heart my dear friend but when the sun reaches midday this is your youth age now, when I am young, 20, 30, 40, what do I say? I am free. I can do whatever I want. There is no power in this entire world that can say to me otherwise. No one can stop me. I'll go wherever. I'll see whoever. I'll do whatever, whenever, however, with whom I choose to do. I am free do as I please. The Lord, through the Holy Scriptures, says to all of us, learn from the movement, Simeon, of the sun. This is a sign for all of you. The movement of the sun that happens before your eyes every single day of your life. For how many years have you been seeing the sun going up and down? Haven't you learned that this sign is about you and your life remember you will never remain young all your life you will never be that strong person all your life you will never be standing on your feet all your life because just like the sun became so strong a time will come the sun will start going down and as it goes down it becomes weaker in light and weaker in strength until it fades away and out of sight out of mind and when the sun goes down is when the spirit leaves the body this sign is saying one day you are born one day you will leave this world there is no escape from this just like you couldn't stop your birth you can't stop your death learn from the sun so what do you need to do to prepare for your departure be good 
Don't hurt people. Don't be someone who is a reason for causing headaches, heartaches, pains, divisions, and destruction. Be a constructive person. Sow the seed of love in order when the spirit leaves the body, you harvest the fruit of love. Learn from the son. Simeon is a sign today telling me what's coming my way and there is no escape from it. Now, chapter 15, it says, Then I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues. What are those last seven plagues? We spoke about them at the beginning of the book of Revelation. The seven seals, the seven trumpets, and the seven bowls. And we said, the seals, the trumpets, and the bowls are all one. So the first seal goes hand in hand with the first trumpet, with the first bowl, and the second, and so on and so on. However, the seal is the word of God, the promises of God. So God comes at the beginning, he will give you promises. I am with you all the days of your life and until the end of all ages. That is a promise. That's a seal. I will never leave you orphans. Do not be troubled. Don't let your heart be troubled. Trust in God and in me also. Don't be troubled. So these are all what? Seals, promises. When we do not adhere to those promises, when we give a deaf ear to the, to the voice of God and to the word of God, God will send the trumpets. What are the trumpets? Warnings. My child, I've been calling you. Why aren't you coming to the church? Stop going to the club, Habibi. Madalin. Why you go to Star City Casino? Come to the church. It's for free. You're going there and you're spending all your hard work. All the money's gone to Satan. And then you've got a problem with your president who is the wife waiting for you at home to rip you apart. Why are you doing this? Come to church for free, my dear friend. No one will force you to donate. In this church, we don't take that plate around during this Holy Mass service. For as long as I live, that will never go around. There is a box outside the door. You want to put money in there? It's between you and the Lord. I don't need to know about it. And I don't need to put you in any awkward position. And secondly, nothing should interrupt the Holy Mass service. Money is just a mean. Here, the God of this church is Christ. No one else. So... So there is a box there if you want to donate. Up to you. You don't want to donate, fine. Just pray for us. Pray for us, my dear friend. The, the Lord is good. His treasure house is endless. It's overflowing. Never ends. The more he takes out, the more it overflows. This is the Lord. Trust in him. So, he will send you warnings if you do not adhere to his promises, to his word. And if you do not adhere to the warnings, then the balls will come. The balls is the judgment and the wrath of God, punishment. First, he will come and speak to you nicely. If you don't listen to him, he'll warn you. If you, if you don't listen to his warning, he'll break you. Which one you want to do? You don't want to come to him? He's going to chop you. He's going to cut you. He's going to break you to make you. But he will. Why? Because he paid the price for you. His precious blood was shed on the cross on Calvary. This blood no one can buy, no one can sell, no one can trade with, my dear friend. Freely you have received, freely you shall give. It is the Lord who's done it all, no one else but him. So come to him in the easy way, otherwise the Lord will do with you the hard way so don't go clubbing again i will kill you <laughs> a reminder to all i have red belt in karate even though i have a long skirt 
but I can do an a scissor cut like Bruce Lee. I taught Bruce Lee karate, okay? So just be careful. My beloveds, we need to come to the Lord. He is worthy of every drop of love we give him. He's worthy of it. Is it hot? A bit hot, eh? It's my presence anyway, don't worry. Um, so now, so he saw there were seven angels having the seven last plagues. The seven last plagues are the seals, the trumpets, and the bowls, the punishment, the judgment of God. So, but prior to the punishment, prior to the judgment, God showed John the Beloved a sign in heaven. What do we learn from this? Even when God is angry, even when God is offended, even when God is upset with us all, before coming to punishing us, He will give us a sign to say, learn from the sign, wake up before my hand comes down at you. Because when it comes down, no one can stop the hand of God when it comes down in full steam ahead to punish the whole world. And God will punish the whole world. He will. He will teach every human who tried to challenge the existence of God and the awesomeness of God. He will show them and tell them clearly, you are nothing but a piece of dust. You can never be God, for there is only one. His name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. And Jesus is stunning. Stunning. Do you think this is just a myth? Do you think this is just a story? Do you think this is just something was written 2000 years ago, fabricated by certain uh, people? No, Jesus is God revealed in the flesh. This is the truth. And sooner or later, everyone will realize this. Christians and, and non-Christians alike. Christ has got nothing to do with Christians. Christ has got to do with the true divine God. There are so many Christians, are only Christians by name, have no idea who Jesus is. No idea. They just received this name at their infancy stage. They were baptized and given a name and they were called a Christian. But unless you grow and have a personal relationship with Christ, you will never understand the awesomeness of this stunning, breathtaking person called Jesus Christ of Nazareth. All glory to his holy name. And I always say to him, I say, man, you're too good looking for a Jew. It's a shame that you should have been a Syrian brother. But then you would have had a big Assyrian nose. Now you don't want that. Then you have to go to Istanbul to make it smaller. Don't facelift nothing. You're beautiful as you are. God wanted you to be this way. Accept it. Believe me. Don't blow your face up and look like a fish. Don't. Give me the money, I'll feed all the people that are starving with all those procedures. We need to think. What are we doing? All right. So those seven plagues are the seals, seven seals, seven trumpets, and seven bowls. The judgment of God is coming. For in them the wrath of God is complete. You see? And those seven, 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 seven is the wrath of God complete. Now the word wrath of God is complete. The word wrath means God's justice is being served. When God gets angry, it's not like when we get angry. You see, the wrath of God is holy. The wrath of God is perfect. The wrath of God is fair. But we get angry, yet we are wrong. We get angry for jealousy reasons, for envy reasons, for hatred reasons, 
for whatever pride reasons we get angry for so many wrong reasons God will only get angry for holy reasons for justice so he's not gonna come and say I'm angry now I hate your guts no no he's gonna say I'm angry and you deserve this my child he's calm and collected even when he's angry because his anger is holy is balanced so for the for the wrath of God is complete meaning now God through these seven plagues will receive his justice back because so many people in the past and more so in the 21st century are challenging the authority the sovereignty and the existence of God God will teach those people a lesson they will never forget forever he will show, show them, I am God, you're not. How dare you, you try to be one whom you have never been created to be. With all of this technology that is happening, the human race, certain people have become so prideful of themselves, boastful of themselves, that look at us, technology has advanced, the medical field has advanced, science has advanced, Look, we can create this and we can do this. We are God. Yet they are nothing but a piece of dust. One little virus. That's it, you're finished. Stephen Hawkins, the greatest physicist the world had seen so far. He remained in a wheelchair, fully paralyzed from head to toe. The only thing that was functioning in Mr. Stephen Hawking's, the greatest physicist, was the, the, the cords, the vocal cords. They were the only things functioning. Look at the Lord, how awesome He is, how fair and just He is. Stephen Hawking's tried. He had a big, he had a big head, not a mind that can weigh the whole world. And he tried to prove through physics how this universe came about. <laughs> Man, I, I don't know, I laugh, but out of, out of sadness and frustration. I laugh, I laugh at such educated people, yet so ignorant, so ignorant. Do you think with your little tiny intellect, you piece of dust, you can come to this truth who created the universe are you serious and this goes to every young man and woman at high school and university levels if any lecturer comes i don't care what their credentials are what their qualifications are and i'm saying it out of out of love and respect but the truth must be said any lecturer comes and says nonsense and says that this universe came into existence because there was a big bang over 13 billion years ago. Say your grandpa is waiting for you at Taronga Zoo. It is that monkey jumping on the tree. So next time you go there, you throw him a banana and say, G'day grandpa. Look, I've said it before. Just our DNA just our DNA look at God the awesomeness of God the awesomeness of Jesus Christ who is God revealed in the flesh every human's DNA there is almost 8 billion people living on the planet as we speak well thanks to this little kid called Bill Gates, he's trying to reduce it to around 1 billion you see another ignorant soul and the people behind him are even more ignorant. You'll never have the day that you reduce world population unless Christ says so. Because he can wipe you out of existence before you blink your eyes. Just the human DNA. It is made out of 3.1 billion bits of information. 3.1 billion bits of information. If I were, if we were to convert 
those 3.1 billion bits of information into an A4 page paper, A4 page paper with 500 words per page, it would take me 600,000 pages to write your DNA, my dear friend. 600,000 pages, 500 words per page of an A4 size paper. With all this awesomeness, 8 billion almost people living, no one's fingerprint is identical to the next. You're telling me a big bang, you big bang? What big bang? Your head is a big bang. But we know where you came from, the round table. The secret societies, the godless, you were put there deliberately to brainwash the younger generation. So when they graduate from uni, they say there is no God. But the wrath of God is complete in these seven plagues, meaning God will always be justified and he will always receive his justice no matter how hard Satan tries and those who worship Satan try, they will be put to shame at the end. For Jesus Christ is always known to be victorious, triumphant. For in them the wrath of God is complete. But even though God is coming with the wrath, but prior to his wrath, he's given a sign. He still loves you. He still loves you, my dear atheist friend. He still loves you. What's that Jewish guy, um, Herrera, Ferreira? Yuval Harari. Yuval Harari. He's apparently uh, Klaus Schwab's favorite kid. He's so genius, Klaus Schwab. I, uh, takes his advice. This little kid, Harari, says there is no God because he's an LGBTQRSTUVZYZ. And because, and he's a Jew, so he must have read the scriptures. He must have read about Sodom and Gomorrah. He must have. So now, what does he do? He doesn't want to give up on his unacceptable lifestyle in the eyes of God. So I don't want to give up on this lifestyle. So I'll give up on God. I'll say there is no God because my partner is another guy, Adam and Steve, not Adam and Eve. Actually, I was on ABC for a short glimpse and I'm becoming famous. <laughs> Go to ABC brother. All the mainstream media, liars. Anyway, the wrath of God is complete. Actually, they put me on there for uh, talking about if some, if a female comes and says I'm a male, I was saying they cut this out of the whole topic. Yeah, they're sneaky, huh? ABC, you're sneaky. You reporter, mm, you're very, very naughty. <laughs> do you think you do such a report is gonna, is gonna worry me? I eat too much curry, brother. Next time I'll send it to Calcutta. All right, so the world the world is blind but you belong to the one who said i am the light of the world i am the way the truth and the life you belong to him don't imitate the world don't have no part of the world do not go where christ disapproves of you don't belong to those dark alleys you don't belong in those wrong places, my dear friend, because the price is too high for you to lose. It is the blood of the Lamb of God. He purchased you. You need Him. Where are you going? What are you doing? Don't listen to no one 
but Jesus Christ. For in him is the fullness of truth. Outside of him, it is the world that is embedded in the bosom of Satan, the father of all lies. The father of all lies. The father of all lies. And this is exactly what we've been witnessing in recent years. Nothing but lies. Corona, Toyota, Camry, Lexus, getting the jab. Lies. 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 Vote for Trump. <laughs> that just came out of nowhere, huh? There you go. Verse number two. And I saw something like a sea of glass mingled with fire. And time flies. And I saw something like a sea of glass mingled with fire. And those who have the victory over the beast, over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, standing on the sea of glass, having harps of God. My goodness, the Holy Bible is amazing. And I saw something like a sea of glass mingled with fire. What is this sea of glass mingled with fire? It is this world. The sea of glass mingled with fire is the world. Glass, when you look through a glass, it's very clear. There are certain seas, the water is so clear, is so pure, when you look, you can see everything under that water, fish, swimming, you can see everything. It's like glass, crystal clear glass water. So a sea like glass, meaning clear, pure, nice, beautiful, stunning, amazing. But there is fire mingled with fire. A sea like glass mingled with fire takes me all the way to the book of Genesis and the Garden of Eden, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The sea of glass mingled with fire is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Sea of glass, glass, good, evil, fire. Meaning the world. What is the world? The world gives you at the beginning good, and at the end gives you evil. At the beginning it's crystal clear, at the end it is burning fire. You see, when I came out of home, whinging and complaining about the life at home and my Middle Eastern parents, pain in the neck, old fashioned, who did not let me do things my way, they always nagged and nagged and nagged. I wanted to go out, where are you going? I wanted to see a friend, who is your friend? I wanted to stay late, can't, you're gonna be home 10 p.m. or else you're grounded. I was fed up with my parents picking on me all the time. So I said, enough of you, I live in Australia. I live in Sydney. I live in Melbourne. I live wherever. You know what? It's a free country. Mom and dad, one more talk. I'll call triple zero. They'll put you in the cage. See you later, alligator. So I went out with me mates. Hello. I went with me mates. The first time we went downtown, brother. For the first time, I said with a loud voice, finally, I am free. Finally, I am living the life. I'm living the American dream, right? So finally, this is life, bro. This is freedom. Look at it. The city is beautiful at night. There are so many colors and so many beautiful things. And so many wonderful things. So I loved it. At the beginning, it was a clear sea like glass. It was a sea like glass. I went, I loved it, I enjoyed it thoroughly. And then I went again and again, and I mixed with more friends and more friends. And before I knew it, I was burned by the world. It was a sea of glass mingled with fire. 
The beginning is good, but the end is evil. So many young men and women that I came to know, when they disobeyed God, disobeyed parents, good, morally sound parents, they disobeyed them. They went seeking their life, their freedom, their enjoyment. At the beginning, they were flying, they were cruising, and they said, this is what life is all about. A short while later, they ended up either in prison or being killed or on drugs, destroyed their future, their life. They were burned by the sea of glass mingled with fire. This is the world that you are fighting for, my dear friend. People seeked freedom outside of God. They were enslaved in 2020. People seeked freedom outside of God. They were enslaved in 2020. The only time you put trust, your trust in, is in God, not in man. It is in God. And this God is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So many presidents that came to America, I don't know, I'm talking about America, I don't know why. Honestly, I wasn't thinking about it. Something happening. I'll say this to the next president. And I want the next president to hear this and hear it very very carefully the next time you stand and you say God bless America you better say Jesus Christ of Nazareth who is this God if you say God and you stop at God you are not respecting Jesus why aren't you saying May God, who is Jesus Christ of Nazareth, bless America. Why are you afraid of saying it? Why? Who are you trying not to offend? Certain people behind the scenes? Or the people that live in your country who are non-Christians? Listen. When I talk about Jesus, now it's me. Now, When I talk about the Lord, it's got nothing to do with anyone. I'm not talking about the Lord in the hope that I offend someone. No, quite the contrary. I'm talking about the Lord because this is it. This is the truth. I can't fabricate things. I can't falsify things. I can't twist and bend things. I have to say it as is. Jesus Christ is God revealed in the flesh. Now, you want to accept it or not, it's your choice. You want to be offended by it or not, that was not my intention at all. But just because you got offended, that's not going to stop me from saying it again and again and again and until the last breath of this life which Jesus Christ gave this piece of wreck. I'll always say it. So God, who is Jesus Christ, bless America. Otherwise, Mr. President, America is gone. The next election is decisive. The people of America, they need to wake up. And the next president need to be extremely clear on how they gather themselves and talk. The Lord, the Lord will discipline any and every nation that once upon a time believed in him and now walked away from him, he will definitely bring that nation to its knees and make an example of it before the whole world. And the next elections here, I'll be putting my name for the prime minister. Yes. 
Man, I'll walk into the parliament house. The first thing I'll do, I'll sack everyone. And I'll bring, you know, I'll bring all the boys with big tattoos and big muscles. I'll make this guy an interior minister, the other one health minister. I'll bring them all, mate. All my beautiful Lebanese friends, come on down, brother. No, no, come on up. Not down. Yes. So we need a change. We. If we walk in darkness, there is no life. I will challenge all those who are multi, not only billionaires, but trillionaires. I challenge you. Have you ever tasted inner peace? Have you ever tasted true love, true joy, true happiness? You walk and you're afraid of your own shadow. You put your head on the pillow and you don't know who's going to come and take that life away. You live in absolute secrecy. You don't want to be revealed. You don't want to be known because you've got too much at stake to lose. So do you call this life? Why don't you come and embrace Jesus and go out and walk down Smart Street Fairfield? Or George Street in the city. Walk in the open and say who you are without being afraid. Without being afraid. There is nothing more precious than living, tasting, and feeling freedom. True freedom. True freedom. Finally, I'm free. That will only be made possible when Jesus becomes the crown of your head and your glory. When Jesus, that's the only way. This has got nothing to do with you're a Christian or not. It is Jesus. I've gone up there and I've gone down there. I've seen both heaven and hell. Hell is hell. <laughs> Can't get any heller than hell. And heaven is stunning. I can assure every human being. I'm not benefiting from this. No, nothing. But I'm telling you this is the truth. I can assure every human being. If you're going to end up in heaven, you will only meet Jesus. No one else. He's the only way. There is no Muhammad. There is no Buddha. There is no Krishna. I'm not offending you. Please. I'm begging you. I'm kissing your feet. It is only Jesus. I've been there. This outfit doesn't change nothing. Doesn't. Just because I'm wearing this, it's not going to make me any different. It is when I give my heart to the Lord that He will make all the difference in me. So don't think I'm wearing this, I'm special. I'm not. You're special because God chose to make you special. Allow Him, please, I beg you, allow Him. Allow Him. Our times are evil. Allow the Lord. And I saw something like a sea of glass mingled with fire. This is the world. The temptation of the world, the pleasures of the world is the sea of glass mingled with fire. The beginning, your, your beginning journey in the world is glass, clear, beautiful. But the end of your journey in the world is nothing but burning fire. You'll destroy yourself chasing the world. How many people you thought they were the best friends you could ever have? and they betrayed you and sold you just like that how many times you trusted people and they just let you down how many times you said this is it and there is nothing like it and you came to this gruesome realization and truth that i was deceived misled and blinded by satan and the temptation of the world but when you come to jesus what you see is what you get he is genuine he is honest and truthful with you. When he says, I love you, nothing will change him. 
Even if you walk away, he will still love you. Even if you betray him, he will still love you. Even if you sell him like Judas Iscariot, he will still love you and cry for you. Because he's genuine. He's holy. You know what holy means? Cannot change. That's what holiness is. Never changing. And cannot change. If God wanted to change, he can't. That's why he is holy. And we thank him for being the never changing God. We thank him for that. Now, and those who have the victory, see those, the Israelite people who came out of the great tribulation victorious. How did they come victorious? They overcame the beast, the image and his image and over his mark and over the number of his name. We, we talked about this in Revelation 13. Yeah. The beast, the image and the mark of the beast and the number of the beast and the name of the beast. So those who overcame the system, the system, the one world order, the system, my beloved, one world religion. Oh my. Church leaders are selling Christ. Some, not all. If any church leader comes and says, all humanity worship the same God. And there is, Jesus is not the only way to heaven. Everyone prays in their own way. It will get them to heaven. You are a son of a snake. You are the brood of the viper. You are a liar like your father Satan. There is no way to heaven except Jesus. There is no one outside of Jesus that can take you to heaven. He is the only way to heaven. He is the only truth in heaven. And he is the only life in heaven. He is it. Period. No one else. So there is no such thing as one world religion. These are sons of the snake. I love everyone. I will always love everyone for one reason, because my sweetheart Jesus taught me to do so. But I can never share my Jesus with someone that does not accept him and believe in him as God revealed in the flesh. I will never share the table with that person. I will never pray with people that do not acknowledge Jesus as God. I will only pray with those who acknowledge Jesus as God, but I will always pray for, not with. I will always pray for everyone, the atheist, the Muslim, the Buddhist, the Hindus, I'll pray for all of them, but I will never pray with them because their God is not my God and there is only one God. So which one is it? I know one thing, my God killed himself to give me life, never said go and kill. I know one thing, my God said, I created you in my image, according to my likeness, you're my son. I gave you the ultimate dignity, my son, not a cockroach in the next life. Anybody home? Anyone? My God is the creator of the wind. The wind is not God. The elephant is not God. The cow is not God. God created them all. This God, his name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth because he is the only true divine God revealed in the flesh. Lord, I love you, brother. I love you. I adore you. I, will, I don't care, Lord. I don't care. Let the whole world hate me. I don't care with love and respect. You are my love. You are my everything. Everything. And I'm willing to die for this. So you don't scare me, people. No one. I've got nothing to lose. My spirit is in the hand of my Jesus. Go and steal it from his hand if you can. Ha, ha, ha. 
You know, if these secret societies and those who are trying to be God on earth, if they see the other side, oh my, my, my. They'll drop everything. They'll become like little mouse. They'll be so afraid of Jesus. I can tell you, oh, he's awesome. No one moves one millimeter in heaven unless Jesus gives that permission. No one. No angels, no saints, no one. Jesus is in control. And you want to buy and sell in the house of the Lord? What am I going to do with money? You can come and give me millions and bribe me with billions. Right? Jesus is not for sale. Get lost. It's not for sale. So they overcame, his, uh, they overcame the beast, his image, uh, and his mark, and the number of his name. And they were standing on the sea of glass, having harps of God. Now the sea of glass, we said, it is the world. They were standing on the sea of glass, meaning all the temptations of the world were under their feet. They stepped on every temptation. Next time, my dear son, your friend, so-called friend, says, let's go downtown because I've got a bag full of white powder ready for you. Step on it. Next time, my dear daughter, your friend, girl, not boy, okay? <laughs> Your friend says, let's go out. We're going to have some fun. And some boys are going to come as well. Step on it. They're going to tempt you. Drink this. Smoke this. Take this. Step on it. I don't need to be in the street. I don't need to be in a hotel overlooking the Darling Harbor till the second day. I don't need to sit in a Ferrari in a Mercedes-Benz, in a BMW. Who said you need it? You don't. Don't sell Jesus for something that is vanity of all vanities. What is that car going to do for you? What is those money in the account going to do for you if you've lost Christ? The Lord said it. What does it benefit a man if he gains the whole world, but at the end loses himself? What are you going to benefit? What are you going to benefit? Nothing. Nothing, my child. Nothing. They were standing on the sea of glass, meaning trampling the temptation of the world underfoot, just like their master Jesus did. So next time they call you, say, I'm busy. Why are you busy? I'm going to see the best looking bishop, bro. I've been called so many, you know, uh, my name has been pronounced so many different ways. His name is Mari Mari. They, 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 um, they spelled my name M-A-R-Y. They made me Mary. <laughs> I'm going to see Mari Mari Mary Mary. Um, if you hear Mar Mari, Mar is an Aramaic word, Syriac. Mar is a, is a title of respect. Like in the olden days, they used to call people Lord or Sir or Master. It's a kind of a respect. So it's a, it's a title of respect for the priesthood rank, not for the person himself, but Christ who is in this person. So Mar Mari. And Mary was one of the 70 disciples which the Lord himself chose while he was on earth. Because the Lord chose 12 and then 70 himself he chose them. Mary was one of the 70 disciples. He goes back all the way at the time of Jesus Christ. And aren't I blessed to have his name yet? I am a piece of wreck. I'm nothing. So, 
So they were standing on the sea of glass, having harps of God, and I'll finish it off on this. Having the harp of God. Standing on the sea of, of, of glass, the world and its temptations, with all the persecutions the world bring you when you start standing against the world, the world will start persecuting you. You'll start going through some hardships. So they were going through a lot of difficulties, but in the midst of all those difficulties, they had the harp of God in their hands. Meaning, even though from outside I am in trouble, from outside I am burning, from outside I am being hated, I am being persecuted, I am being crushed, broken, I am being rejected, downgraded. Even all these things are happening from outside, but inside I am singing because God is with me. He made me triumphant. I'm singing. In the midst of the tribulation, but I have that inner peace. You know, one thing differentiates a believer from a non-believer. One thing. Love. One thing differentiates someone who believes in Jesus Christ of Nazareth, all glory to his holy name, and from someone who has no faith at all, is love. Why? Because when you come to know Jesus, you get to love him. And since God is love, therefore the only source of love is God. You cannot obtain, acquire, get love from any other source but God. Because the only source to love is God, for God is love. So when you get to know this God, you get to love Him. It is then and then only when you love God, you will be singing, yet you have so much weight on your shoulders, but from inside, you're shouting hallelujah. You know, I've said this before and I'll say it again. We pray and ask the Lord Jesus as Christians. We ask the Lord, please Lord, um, I've got this problem, please fix it for me. I've got this issue happening in my life, can you please put an end to it? Um, I want to do this, I want, I want my business to prosper. We ask so many things. But when, when we're asking for a specific thing, we are waiting from the Lord to give us our wish, our request. When the Lord doesn't give us our wish, what do we say usually? God doesn't care. God is not hearing me. God has forgotten about me. He's walked away from me. No. You see, sometimes the Lord will not grant you what you're asking for. So the Lord is not going to come and change your situation, but He will definitely come to change you, not the situation. Because... It is much more beneficial for you and I when God changes us, not the circumstances we're in. Because if the Lord takes me out of a situation, I haven't learned anything. I haven't learned anything. So I come out of this situation, there is another one waiting for me. So when I go into another hardship, what am I going to do? I will deny God. But God is going to come and say, okay, I'm going to give you enough wisdom, enough strength, enough courage, I'll elevate you and put you above your circumstances where you come to this, to this wisdom and to this knowledge and strength and power that you step on the situation even if it's still there, yet inside you've got a harp, the harp of God. You're singing and saying, the doctor said you're going to die in two weeks, yippee! I prayed to pass the exam. I went and I failed miserably. Hallelujah. I'm going to throw in the biggest party for my failure. Do we do that? No, we cry. We kill ourselves. God, you said ask and it shall be given to you. I asked you, I begged you to pass the exam. Why did you make me fail? Your fault. 
God, I begged you to marry Rachel. I didn't marry Rachel. Your fault. But maybe Rachel is not the one for you. What, what's wrong with Elizabeth? That reminds me of our father Jacob. Don't, don't make the same mistake. See, our father Jacob fell in love with Rachel. <laughs> so he went to his uncle. Lavan. He went to his uncle. He said, uncle, I want your daughter Rachel. The uncle looked. He said, Rachel is too beautiful, man. Not that easy. He said, I'll do anything. He said, okay, you work for me as a slave for seven years. And then we'll talk. He worked for his uncle seven years of slavery. After the seven years, he said, I've done my job. The uncle said, no, no, another seven years. What? Another. He said, yeah, she's worth it. So he works another seven, 14 years of slavery to get Rachel. Leah, the father, he turned to Jacob. He said, why don't you take Leah for free? No slavery. He said, no, 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 no. I don't want Leah. He said, take her. You can marry her now, mate. Why wait 14 years? He said, no, I want Rachel. Look at us, idiots. He married Leah, right, afterwards. But he worked 14 years for Rachel and peanuts for Leah. Um, she must have been broken hearted, poor thing. But look, look, look at the things. Look when we choose things our way, not God's. Look what we do to ourselves. We enslave ourselves. Because I chose Rachel, it's not about Rachel Leah. No, it's about us doing it our way, not God's. When I chose it my way, I became a slave. And what happened with Rachel, the love of his life? She gave him two sons, Joseph and Benjamin. Joseph was betrayed by his brothers, sold to the Ishmaelites merchants, and went as a slave to Egypt. And they came and said to their dad, your beloved son Joseph is dead. He's been eaten by a vicious animal. So Joseph shattered Jacob and Benjamin on the day he was being born, Rachel died giving birth to Benjamin. Is that what you wanted, Jacob, your way? Look what your way did to you, destroyed you. Joseph gone, Benjamin killed the love of your life. Benjamin took the love of your life, the one whom you worked 14 years, slavery for her. Leah, for free, brother. She gave him sons who later became the Synodical Council of the Israelite nation, the Sanhedrin, the 70 elders, Leah. Go Leah, baby, for free. She gave him sons who would write the law and teach the law of God to, their, to the nation. When you do it God's way, totally different. Don't do it your way. Don't say, unless I marry this girl, I'm not going to go out, I'm not going to eat, I'm not going to oh, just get a life, man. I'll get you one, don't worry. They were standing on the sea of glass, even though we have our own hardships, but inside we sing. We have the harps of God. When you have God, when you have the love of God, no matter what you're going through, God will make sure from within you're in peace. Now this, the world can't give. And this is what the Lord said after resurrection. When those apostles were in the upper room, hiding, fearing for their life, he said, peace be with you. My peace I give you. Not like the world gives. My peace, when I give it to you, no one, no one, no one can take it away from you. I give you peace. And this peace will only come when you let God be the love of your life. God bless you.
Um, since we need to leave, um, and I broke the world record today. <laughs> my dear, um, my beloved people, uh, just one thing. Tonight we will have to leave the church premises by 8 sharp. It's only for tonight. We pray we have some good news for next week. The Lord has done something wonderful. So um, just for tonight, if everyone uh, leaves by 8 um, from the uh, church premises, only for tonight. Um, we come to the conclusion of these two verses. What we learn from these two verses to sum it up, trust the Lord, have faith in the Lord, and let the Lord guide you. Let the Lord show you the way. Don't do it your way. Let God do it for you. And when you hear His voice, do not hesitate to get up and run. Don't delay. When the Lord comes and says, come, don't say, Lord, I'm busy. Maybe tomorrow. Tomorrow, no guarantee. When the Lord says, let's go, get up now. Don't worry what the weather is, what the atmosphere is, what the circumstances and the surroundings are. Don't, don't, don't. Because God is above and beyond every circumstance and every situation. He is God. Just get up and walk. Let Him show you what He is all about. Let Him. Trust the Lord. Never fear the Lord. For the one who is going to judge is the very one who died for you and me. Don't fear the one who died for you. He will never come back to hurt you. He hurt himself the most. He hurt himself the most. His name is Jesus. He lives forever. And whoever has Jesus Christ in their hearts, they will live forever with him as well. So God, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, bless Australia. For he is the only God. Yes, and it is Adam and Eve. There is no two ways about it. We pray for the LGBT. But he can't force that lifestyle on me. Over my dead body, government. You know, if I pick up the phone now and I call Jesus and looks like I'm gonna, this is gonna be done one of these days. It's gonna be done. And Jesus is good, man. Yo, what's up, bro? I like your beard, brother. Black and white. Black is the New Testament, white is the Old Testament. <laughs> um, okay, so um, we're going to just say a couple of announcements and then uh, we let you go in peace. Um, if I don't have the chance to, to stay and, and talk to you, my sincere apologies. But God willing, next week we'll be able to do, um, to do that. Um, okay. A reminder again about our um, Good Shepherd Youth Ministry. We've just recently established a youth ministry. It is from the ages of 18 plus. Anyone, boys, girls, from the ages of 18 plus, I encourage you to join our youth ministry. Um, at this initial stage, the meetings will be held once a month. There is a lot of things that we wish to do. And we want our young men and women to come together. In the love of Christ, let us put our hands together in the hands of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and serve the Lord from the heart. We need young men and women to come and serve the Lord. I'm encouraging you to register your name. Uh, please put your name down if you haven't done so as yet. Even those who are watching us for live streaming, if you live locally around the area, email us and, and then just come. We will inform you. 
when will be the next meeting that will be held? It is our youth ministry, the Good Shepherd Youth Ministry from the ages of 18 plus. To register, see either Father George or Father Daniel. I believe today Father Daniel is available. If you don't get the chance today because of the um, time restriction, just for today, God willing, you can see them next week. But please do enroll in our youth ministry. Um, we will start learning about the Holy Bible. This is one of the things we will do, and this is the foundational things we will do. So the foundation to our youth ministry is to be equipped, to be embedded with the knowledge of Christ. So there will be biblical teachings built on apostolic teachings, my beloved. A 2,000 year history. True teachings, my beloved. So, and then there will be other ministries, other outreaches, and we need our young men and women. I can't make enough emphasis on the importance of joining the youth ministry. It is 18 plus. Teens for Christ are going on a spiritual camp in July. Please see Father George's. It is from the ages 12 to 19. Uh, parents, if you'd like to you know, enroll your uh, children in this spiritual camp, which I encourage you to do that, please do so. See either Father George or Father Daniel for the spiritual camp. It'll be on the, from the 14th of July till the 16th of July, Friday to Sunday, uh, July. Uh, hopefully I'll be joining them for a day as well. I'll be coming out. Maybe I'll wear a tracksuit or something. I'm gonna gonna play soccer as well afterwards. You know, you, you can't you can't be an oversaved Christian. We can't talk always about Jesus, Jesus. We need to have fun as well, huh? But even when we have fun, it's always the Lord Jesus. Yes, Amen. 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 Um, Uh, a reminder, there has been in recent times, uh, unfortunately, some people have been uh, using our name, creating false Facebooks, and then uh, sending messages to, to followers so, as if it's coming from me. Um, and then I'm asking for money. Ed, I can assure you it's not me. I've never had, never will have any social media platform under my personal name. The only time is it is under the church, Christ, the Good Shepherd Church. I've never had any personal social media platforms. So please, if you see Marmari, Bishop Mari, the good looking, whatever, coming to you saying, please, we are building an orphanage in Africa. We need money. We, there is an earthquake here. We need money. It's a lie. It's not for me. I will never do that. The only time I'll do it is when I'm standing here at this pulpit and saying it to everyone. So please report those fa fa fake accounts. Report them, please. Hopefully, um, they will close them eventually. But don't fall for this trap, please. Uh, and I pray for those people who are abusing the system. Uh, I pray that they repent and uh, stop doing uh, these things. It's not nice. Please keep in your uh, prayers the intention of uh, having a primary and a high school. We are uh, in the, we just working on this, so I need everyone's prayer uh, to see what the will of our Lord Jesus is to have a primary and a high school uh, for our beloved church. Um, the other one is, this is, um, I hope it goes to the, our beloved people in Sweden. Okay, this is for a couple that I've met in a city, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, Hevde. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, Hevde, which is in Sweden. And I met you, my beloved couple, at a hospital. Please, if you're watching, if you are listening now to us, I'm begging you. I had a problem with my phone a while back. I lost all the contacts. Don't ever think I've ignored you or I've never replied to you. So please, I can't mention your name. For, for pri privacy reason, but I have met you and what a wonderful couple you are. I love you. You are my children in Christ and I love you to death. But please, 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 if you're watching, I met you in Khivde, I believe it was a hospital in Sweden. Please, again, email us and give us your phone number. I will immediately contact you. And for those who have been reaching out, and there is a lot of emails that come from all over the world, my sincerest of sincerest apologies, 
I'm not catching up. <laughs> so if, if you don't hear from the bishop, I'm not ignoring you, but it is, we've been inundated with emails from all over the world. By the way, I didn't realize, and this good old bishop has come so famous. <laughs> old glory to the sweetheart of all sweethearts. I've been invited to go to South Africa to give a talk. Honolulu, Hawaii. Surf with the great white shark, brother. Um, America, apparently, yes. Uh, I mean, I used to go to America prior to the pandemic. Um, I used to go three, four times a year. Uh, so I went quite often, and I, I love you, my beloved people in America. And I pray that I will uh, be with you in person in the very, very near future. Please pray for me. Um, I need to go to Melbourne. They've been asking me to go to Melbourne for so long. I used to go to Melbourne once a month. Uh, I haven't for the last three years, three and a half years maybe, because of the pandemic. And that... <laughs> Dan Ao. You go, mate. Relax. Dan Andrews, just put the prawns on the barbie, mate. Forget about... What vaccine? You know it's a lie. Get a life. Eat a fish burger. I'll get you the chocolate sundae. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, please pray for me, because I need every prayer. Um, for the Lord to always be glorified. Always be glorified. It is all Him. Amen? Amen. It's all Him. It's all Him. So we thank the Lord Jesus. Um, any otherwise, that's it. I think I've done my part. I shall, um, before we say the sealing prayer, I pray from the bottom of my heart for the Lord Jesus to bless every single one of you that are here present in this holy church and those who are watching us through live streaming. May the Lord Jesus bless you, guide you, protect you, deliver you from all the snares of the enemy, whether it be visible or invisible. May the almighty Jesus Christ of Nazareth, by the prayers of our Holy Mother Mary and all the saints, be always with you, for he is the way, the truth, and the life. Shine upon you with his divine light, for he is the light of the world. Hold you steadfast with his mighty right hand, for he is the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. And he is the Good Shepherd, I pray that he always leads you to green pastures and still waters. For he is the good shepherd I shall not want. For he is God, then who can be against me? I pray that you always be close to him. Always love him. Always serve him from the heart, not from the lips. Be genuine as you are. And then I encourage you, no matter how many mistakes you have done in your life, no matter how far you've gone and drifted away, my beloved child, my beloved son and daughter, I am begging you, Jesus loves you beyond measures. Jesus loves you beyond comprehension, beyond any intellectual capacity. Jesus Christ is the infinite Almighty God revealed in the flesh. His love is infinite. His mercy is infinite. His power is infinite. His mightiness is infinite. His Humility is infinite. His forgiveness is infinite. Come while we have the chance. The door of the grace is still open. It is the church. Come to the church, my son, my daughter. Say to him, I sinned. I've done this and this and this and this. Tell him everything. Tell him everything you've done. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be ashamed. He is your daddy your heavenly father. He is the one who loves you the most. There is no one like him and there will never be anyone like him. Tell him everything. Share with him everything, the good and the bad, the beautiful and the ugly, the holy and the filthy. Share everything. Tell him everything. He is known to save. His name is Yeshua, Yahweh the Savior. He is known to save. He is the Elohim. The Almighty in His creation. He creates out of nothing everything. And He can turn everything into nothing. For He is Elohim, the Almighty in His creation. And He is Yahweh, the Almighty in His provisions. Everything you need, He is. You come to Him and you say, I'm thirsty, Lord. 
He will say, I am the living water. He who drinks me shall never thirst again. You come and say, I'm lost, Lord. He will say to you, I am the good shepherd that went seeking the lost sheep and found it, put it on his shoulders and brought it back to the fold. You say to him, Lord, I'm dead. He will say, I am the life and the resurrection. If you hear my word and believe in it, even if you die, you will live. But if you take my body and blood, you will live in me forever. 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 Let's stand for the finale prayer, please. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, Grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. It is in dying that we are born again to eternal life. Amen. May the Lord Jesus bless you, guide you, and protect you all the days of your life, now and forevermore. Amen. We have half an hour. If anybody wants to see me for the next half an hour, I'm still here. God bless you. See you next week.